Good afternoon. I am Simone Calderara. I'm a member of the Image Lab Machine Learning and Computer Vision Group at University of Modena Reggio Emilia and I will talk about deep learning and in particular convolutional neural network for self-feature extraction in earth observation application. So deep learning nowadays is uh, an ubiquitous technique in many machine learning applications. Uh, it has been appointed as one of the most promising set of technique of the last five years and uh, almost all future trend in most machine learning application agrees that deep learning has been judged as the disruptive set of technique for new applications. In particular, if you just take a look of uh, the histograms down there, uh, you can see uh, comparing the revenue, the estimated revenue from all artificial intelligence fields and just deep learning one that almost 90% of expected revenues comes from deep learning applications. So deep learning have been recently applied to earth observation data. If, if you take a look at the histogram down there, uh, you can see that last year, most 80% of the paper applied to earth observation data using deep learning use the CNN model. Uh, the reason is very trivial in the sense that most of the data are similar to images, that is the field in which deep learning gives its best. And the other reason is that using a deep learning architecture, fusing data is pretty easy since you are mapping the data into a latent space and you can control the dimension of the space so you can easily fuse together data from different sensors and this is also the case of earth observation as well. And uh, additionally, you can also look for weak correlations between data that can add some information uh, in addition to well-known uh, measures that comes from this kind of data, such as the NDVI index. As for the field, most of the paper focused on land use, land classification application, and then object detection and segmentation as well. This is the general scheme of a convolutional neural network applied to earth observation data. If you see on the left, there's the input that is an hyperspectral cube, so are several images stacked along the uh, channel axis. And those images are fitted to a convolutional neural network where a convolutional kernel slides on the image and tries to extract some patterns from it. So you can see the animation on the bottom right part of the image. And the kernels are learned on a training set and the first layer kernels capture very trivial patterns such as uh, uh, white and black stripes on the image or some color combination. After extracting those patterns, those are combined in a hierarchical level uh, to capture more complex semantic features. And then those features are feed to a classifier and the classifier takes the decision in a supervised way. So it decides whether those feature vector lead to a particular class or lead to a particular function. So after this uh, brief overview, I will talk more specifically about the AI for EO project that is uh, about processing earth observation data with artificial intelligence technique uh, in order to uh, check the presence of a specific disease, but uh, I will go into the detail later. And the project was funded by ESA and was done in cooperation with uh, ICS Institute of Teramo, Remedia and Progressive. So the AI for EO project I'm set identifying and detecting the presence of West Nile disease on the territory. The machine learning unit that was supervised by me, uh, up to now we are in the middle of the project, <coughs> studied the problem and up to now we developed three contributions. We have a single instance deep learning based classifier, the typical CNN architecture for taking this classification problem. We have a strategy for fusing together temporal information, so different images of the same location in time. And we have also devised a completely novel and supervised feature extraction models for earth observation data. 
The data we used are the Copernicus Sentinel-2 mission and uh, are particularly rich data that provides a lot of information in terms of landscape, images, and features. So the baseline classification model is a traditional deep convolutional network. So we have some convolutional layer and the classification at the end, and it's based on a well-known architecture that is called ResNet 18. Uh, it means those are 18 layers. And at the end, we have a two classes classifier that tells us whether the West Nile disease is present or not. So in this case, we validated the classifier with different data coming from uh, Sentinel-2 as well, but on the presence of a vector that is called C. micola with the cooperation of IZS Institute. And you can see in the table the results in terms of accuracy and F1 score. And you can see that the model just acting on the RGB image provides quite uh, low performances and when all the bands are used the performances increases in uh, the table you can see that where a cross is present the models was trained from scratch so from earth observation data only and when a check is present the model was trained using also general images so the low level features has been extracted on images data set that are not specifically related to it observation data this suggests that somehow even with other images the patterns that emerge in the low level kernels can be transferred also in the earth observation data context the second contribution is a technique for aggregating different images of the same location in time so if you look at the image on the left we have different images of the same location at time t equal to one two and so on we processed every single image with the same single baseline that i was showing before so it's a convolutional architecture that produces a feature vector here then those feature vectors are stacked together along the temporal axis so we have one feature vector for every time step and we developed two different aggregation techniques. The first one is based on 1D convolution along the time axis. So here, the difference in time between those features vectors are taken into account, and then those feature vectors are fused together in order to uh, building the final feature vector that is after passed to the classifier. And in the second scheme, the time is not taken into consideration so those feature vectors are combined together by means of uh, uh, the so-called attention coefficients that are also learned during training of the model if you look at the table and if you look at the result uh, we can state that the temporal aggregation is more effective even in this case we validated the model with the presence or the absence of a vector like C. imicola as well and uh, among the possible strategies we can state that taking time into cons consideration if possible is uh, uh, a good idea to fuse together features coming from different temporal streams so up to now I've shown you the baseline and the temporal aggregator this is the third contribution we have made to the AI for EO project and in my opinion is also the most innovative one uh, we started from the idea that deep cnn features are typically extracted from classifier that are pre-trained supervisedly on uh, manually annotated data set uh, this is not the case of remote sensing in which the data are produced at the fast pace but annotation are extremely costly so we have much less annotation than data and color images can still be processed by deep cnn because experiment uh, i was showing you before tells us that low level features can be transferred from general color images to earth observation images without the loss in performance so uh, we started with the problem that we need a strategy for feature extraction from spectral bands even in absence of supervision uh, the advantages is that we can benefit from newly produced data without annotating them and if those features are different from the RGB ones the classifier can be coupled together and ensemble in order to strengthen the decision of the classifier itself 
So our solution is very, very easy. It's based on a trivial intuition that we have always at our disposal a weak supervision signal that comes from color images. So the idea is to use color as the annotation of spectral band images. This is the architectural solution we developed. So if you take a look at the boxed architecture, on the right you have spectral bands in input, you have some sort of feature extractors, and then you have a decoding pathway that mimics the architecture of the feature extractor, but its transposed version. And uh, the annotation signals come from colors. So we start from spectral bands and we try to guess which is the color of the image. This procedure can be applied when you have at your disposal spectral bands and RGB or AB images as well. So for every image in which you have bands and color without the need of annotating them. So if the nectar is capable to guess the color from spectral bands, it's also capable to uh, classify the terrain somehow. Because if I have a field and I decide to uh, color it green, it means that I'm knowing which kind of field it is. So after that, the features that are extracted in this unsupervised way are still good for, for example, classifying the terrain or different uses. So this procedure is not task specific, it's task general and makes use of no supervision in order to extract features from spectral bands. After applying this unsupervised procedure that can be applied on all the images we have coming from Earth observation sensors, uh, the only constraint is to have both spectral images and color images as well, because color images are used for uh, supervise the feature extraction process. Uh, we have also set up a fine-tuning technique that allows those features to be fine-tuned, to be uh, refined for a specific task. In the fine-tuning pathway, you can see we have discard the uh, color image generation part and we have attached the classifier to the feature extracted by colorization. So the classifier, I'm taking those features and uh, outputting uh, the solution of a classification problem. In the case of West Nile disease, this solution is composed by two outputs. Uh, the first one tells us the probability of uh, presence of West Nile and the second one, the probability of absence of West, of West Nile. We have also tested it with uh, a different data set that is called Bigger Datasets. Uh, and, uh, it's a data set from Google that uh, I'm set classifying the terrain in 19 classes. So, so in this case, the classifier output is composed by 19 outputs that states us the probability of a semantic class uh, the terrain belongs to. And uh, if you look at the bottom row, we have the same architecture of the top, but this time we are starting from RGB images. The feature extract extract extraction pathway is composed by features that were pre-trained on general images, so in natural images as well, and those features are fed to the classifier as well. The two classifiers are ensembled together, so we have unsupervised spectral features and color features and two different classification outputs, and those classification outputs are fused together in order to get the final response. So in these slides, we report the test we have done for West Nile disease present detection. Uh, we have used 2018 data split in train and test for fine tuning the classifier. Here the classifier is two class classifier, presence or absence of the disease. And even in this case, we have tested all the possible combination of features we can use. We have the RGB features pre-trained on natural images, the RGB I row. We have the RGB features trained from scratch on the data from 2018. And then we have the spectral bands pre-trained on colorization without supervision, uh, C in bracket. 
and at the end we fuse together the two classifier in order to get the final performance of the system. So by looking at the results we can state that natural images can provide a strong signal for extracting features in RGB images but are not so good in spectral bands as well while instead colorization is a better technique for extracting features in spectral bands. Another interesting point is that those two classifiers makes different errors. So even if their performance are close together, they are not taking the same wrong decision about the same elements. So the classifiers can be fused together with a procedure that is called assembling that always give us the guarantee that the final performance will be higher than the single classifier. So at the end, the final result is capable of reaching a 90% accuracy in the uh, detection of the West Nile disease, starting from the image of a particular land location, uh, with an F1 score of 87%. So we are at the end of our journey, so thank you for the attention. Uh, it was a pleasure. I want also to thank the partner of the project, the IZS Institute of Teramo, Progressive and Remedia for the helpful cooperation during AI for EO up to now. We are in the middle of our journey, so we count in improving the performance as well and also to apply the unsupervised feature extraction procedure to a greater number of images in order to have stronger feature for the task. Thanks again. If you're interested in more information about our research, you can check our web website that is uh, uh, written down here. Thanks.